Father, we love you. Father, we thank you. We honor you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. What a mighty God. What a faithful God. Oh, je crois que n'importe fras qui l'ose y pose que mon de fratis osito je l'itéri à dos et tini à dos y a ti à dos ya. Father, thank you for the good things you do. Thank you for feeding us your word day by day. Thank you for the abundance of revelations. Thank you for the abundance of revelation. Thank you for the supply of your spirit. Thank you for how you have helped us thus far. Thank you, Jesus. Nando Kratezo Praske to Zibo Shatilo Zino Satilo J. Oh, blessed be Jesus. Oh, Zenon de Prakos Kidia. That voice is Pitasin Okopi. Powerful song mistress. Powerful minister of God in song. Every duty minister of God. Oh, Rada la Cusimon de Prasetteli, Jositali, Ado, Zikros Keteliaza. Oh, Rade, God is not there. Libro Tino, Bresco Tidado, Jade Frate. Lift up your voice. Yes, Rada Cusimon, Pretosete, the other. Sing that song aloud. This is your worship. This is your worship. This is your worship. Lirada Badosa. Powerful God. Yeah, laga barada ba sote do raga da. Oshu bare mare o. Oshu bare mare o. Yeah. Oshu bare mare o. Thank you, Jesus. Mande le braco zeteria do zika tenoja. Lira do cretenon de gradeze de belegozi doja. Braco teria. Oh, she barre mare. Oh, Oh, Father, we worship you. Father, we love you. Father, we exalt you. Take all the praise. Take all the glory. Oh, glad den on the praco zefretini and o zida gadabash katinia. Our strength, our pillar, linon precos ketoja gradiadabasco teria. Our very life, it is in you that we live. It is in you that we breathe. It is in you that we have our being. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mam proda kuzimon de pradele gradiziato negra di josa. Rede bede kuzimon de pratolizo si crosianande. Linon de prate kuzi proketizada. Ora de boze non de praske non de fratizuzi doshka. Lidi busha tenon de prasetelia. Non de crate rosi boshka tinoza gradiadashia dada. Oh, Zenemon de Licrotizo Zagradio Dalia, Mande Lupre Teru Zecrosi Catinoja. Thank you, Son of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Pray right now that in the name of Jesus, uh, I receive the spirit of grace and supplication to pray all the time, to have communication with the Father and not to lose heart. In the name of Jesus, I pray tonight, I pray today, I pray this morning, wherever you are, decree and declare. Land right by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare the spirit of grace and supplication envelopes me right now in the name of Jesus. I will not lose art. I will not lose art in the name of Jesus. I will not lose art in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Son of God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Jesus gave a parable in that Luke chapter 18. And verse 8 is made a statement. He said, I tell you that the, the, it, will, it will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith? On the earth when the son of man comes will he really find faith on the earth we pray that in the name of jesus in this year i will not lose my faith by the power of the holy spirit the world that i take in will will cause faith to be birthed always in me in the name of jesus i grow in faith jesus says when the son of man comes will he really find faith on the earth so when jesus returns what he wants to find in you and i is faith i will not lose my faith by the power of the holy spirit you will not lose your faith your word that i will listen to your word that i will study today will stir up a new faith will stir up will grow faith in me in the name of jesus Thank you, Most High. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, you will not lose out. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of grace and supplication is stirred up in you now. In the name of Jesus, faith will be found in you. Faith will be found in your own. Faith will be found in your children. In the name of Jesus, you will not give room for doubt. You will not give room for, 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 for doubt in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Son of God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Welcome back to another powerful episode. This one promises to be a blessed one. We're reading from Luke chapter 17 to 21 today. And I know it will bless you greatly. Oh, sorry, Luke chapter 16 to 20. Luke chapter 16. Um, the, the, the last episode, the two episodes before, we read from Luke chapter 11 to 15. Now we're reading Luke 16 to 20. And this is our episode 26. Thank you for all your comments. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Luke 16 verse 1. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be steward. This is saying that we are steward to God and it does not like waste. 
you know, we read that the man was wasting his goods. And the master said, give account of your stewardship. Let me know how, how much of, of my goods you have wasted. How much of, of, of profit do I have? You know, God is so intentional about our profit. God is intentional about, about, about our productivity. Verse 3 says, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do for my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50, 50% 50 off. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. That frost was owing a hundred measure of oil. The other, a, a, a hundred measure of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. Took off 20%. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly for the son of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. You can imagine that shrewdness. Um, he knew he was going to be, uh, I mean, sacked. He knew um, his master would, would take him off. What did he do quickly? He um, actually met with his master debtors and he said to their bill and say, oh, I want to have, I want to be, uh, uh, he wants to be in their good record so that when he is sacked and he lacked anything, he will know where to go. Jesus said that the children of this world are much true than the sons of life. He was talking about relationship, but let's continue. And I said to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. This is a deep word. Oh my God. It was faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. Let's take it again. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. It did, the scripture didn't say he who is faithful in least will be faithful. It's assumed that when you are faithful in the least, when you are faithful in little, you are equally faithful in much when you are unjust in little is equally assumed or is is believed is that's words is equally believed that you are unjust in much therefore if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches so there is what is called the true riches and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's who will give you what is your own deep 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 question so it means we should be faithful another man that way then our own we also be committed to us so this is coming to you if you are a steward you're an employee in an organization is required that you should be faithful in that because that is the uh yastic that is what the ever measures to commit your own to you 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also had all these things, and they derided, they derided, derided him. Sorry, And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men but god knows your art for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of god did you hear that what is highly esteemed so this is telling us that you are those who justify yourself before men but god knows your art so god sees the art more than our action more than our display he said for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophet were, were until John. So from John, it was grace. Law and the prophet. You hear the word law and the prophet. That is um, the, the Old Testament. The Old Testament. 
Uh, I think we've read it, I think Matthew chapter 17, that mountain that is called the mountain of transfiguration, where Jesus was transfigured in the very eyes of Peter, James, and John. Um, it was recorded that um, Elijah and Moses appeared to Jesus. Moses represent the law, you know, or represented the law, and uh, uh, Elijah represent the prophet. So when you hear the word the law and the prophet, it is talking about the Old Testament. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one title of the Lord to fail. This is a deep statement. The day the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see this, that um, uh, it is easier. God's word doesn't fail. God's word doesn't fail. It is easier for the whole earth and heaven. Now, imagine, you, you, you just imagine how, that, how easy that is for the whole earth, for the whole continent, the Africa, the Asia, the Antarctica, the Australia, you know, the Europe, the North and South America, and what have you, for all of them to pass away and the heavens also to join and pass away for God's word. So that is telling you that practically for God's word not to come to pass, you and I will not be here. You and I will not be here. Okay, he said, verse 18, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commit adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced from, her, from her husband commit adultery. Jesus Christ was actually making it very difficult for you to say you want to divorce. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, <coughs> full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that, it was that, it was that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. One was carried, the other was buried. And being in torments, in AIDS, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So, um, apparently from this story, it, it, it meant that uh, or it means, sorry, it means that the man, the rich man, um, usually see Lazarus at the, 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 his own gate. Because let's look at what happened again. He said, verse 24, then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip <laughs> the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things. So it means the memory is still intact. If if Father Abraham, you know, said here that he should remember, it means those those good things we did or the bad ones we did, irrespective of where we find ourselves after we leave this body, um, it means we would remember, you know. And likewise, Lazarus' evil things. But now he's comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great God fixed. There is a great God fixed. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him to my father's house. So he still have a little bit of pity or mercy for his father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophet, let them hear them. And he said, no, father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Jesus was saying this, to, that 
it is it is good now that we listen you know somebody made a statement a few days ago to me that really stayed with me he said why will you want to be part of the same l of the l of the same l that a man who killed 1,000, who killed 2,000 people for rituals, a man who committed, you know, this, uh, you know, very great atrocities, and you maybe because of lie, that's why you find yourself there. He said, no, you must do everything to making sure that you are not part of it. Some people, you know, you lived a very reckless life, lived a life that said, no, 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 God, if, if hell exists, that's where I want to be. So why would you want to spend hell? spend a, a, the life after now in such a place with men like that you live a pious life maybe all you just do is um, not to be truthful that's the only thing you do but you appear to many like christian like a christian you appear to many like you 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 are really serving god but in the in the true sense you know there is a part of you that is not glorifying god i pray that in the name of jesus the grace to make amend is released upon you in the name of jesus Chapter 17, then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. So it means we're going to offend ourselves. But what to him through whom they do come, it will be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he will offend one of these little ones. Take it to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. This is, a, this is maturity class. I am sure Jesus Christ was teaching maturity class. He said, somebody will offend you seven times. So if you will offend someone seven times and you return, he said, we'll forgive you. Of course, it's not license for sin. If you offend God seven times in a day and you return to say you are sorry, he will do much more. It is no license to sin, but you should know this. So verse five, and the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith <laughs> based on what we just read how uh, could somebody offend you seven times and when it comes to seven seven times in a day you should offend you say no, no 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 this is more than we can talk about increase our faith so the lord said if you have faith as a mustard seed so what he's saying is that small seed is enough you can say to this mulberry tree be pulled up by the root and be planted in the sea and it will obey you each time I read these scriptures, I'm always like, Raku no ziatanoza. Lord, let me understand that God kind of faith. Let me have the God kind of faith. Jesus said, if you say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted, be pulled up by the roots, and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. So in the same vein, Jesus said, if you say to a cancer, if you say to a tumor, if you say to a diabetes, be rooted, be out, it will be so. I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything in your life that you are believing God for, to, to, to resolve, it is resolved now in the name of Jesus. They are resolved now in the name of Jesus. They are resolved now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that cancer. I speak to that tumor. Lero kapa nizofratia. You are ill completely in the name of Jesus. I want to read it again. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. Oh Lord, I need God kind of faith. I need God kind of faith. And which of you having a servant, plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come? That scripture is very powerful. Verse 6 of chapter 17 will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit to eat and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper 
and guard yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servant. We have done what was our duty to do. This is, like I said, when we started, this chapter 17 is a maturity class. Imagine Jesus Christ says, what is the need for, 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 for me to say thank you to you when you are doing the work that has been assigned to you? Verse 11, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers. Hmm. You know, when I read this story, 10 men who were lepers. So it means people who, who have the same problem sometimes have this way of meeting themselves. You know, <laughs> it's just like, you know, in the, in the university. You are studying a course, whether you like it or yes. People that, if you have that, uh, what do you call the, the faculty, and when you are split into department, you will discover that all of you will, will go in the same direction. Who stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, let me tell you, the duties, or one of the duties to say, one of the duties of the priest those days is that the duty served like um, the one who certified that you are now cleansed, that you, are now, you can now come into the temple. So what if they showed themselves to the priest, Jesus said that as you go, before you get to the priest, you will be cleansed. That was what he meant. Go and show yourself to the priest that I don't even need to pray about your leprosy, but just go show yourself to the priest and there you will find that you're cleansed. You know, so he said, uh, verse, so, and so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. The Bible doesn't just say anything. He was a Samaritan. All the others were Jews. You know, Samaritans and the Jews are like hack enemies. They don't want to see themselves. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? It shows that when we come to make prayers, there is a record in heaven to show that, oh, 20 people came to ask for preservation and only one or two returns. So someone said from these scriptures that the record of people who comes back to show appreciation to God are, are, are 10%. You know that. So, um, so Jesus answered and said, well, they're not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? Where are the nine? Were there not any fan who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. You will see the difference between being cleansed and being made well. So returning to give glory to God is, you know, approves us to be well. You know, the other ones were only cleansed, but the ten, or, you know, was made well. And Jesus made a statement, except for this foreigner. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Now, what that shows is that um, um, people get so used to God. So uh, familiarity can make us to be unthankful. 20. Now, when it was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you would desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first 
he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation and as it was in the days of noah so it will also be in the days of the son of man they ate they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all likewise as it was also in the days of lot they ate they drank they bought they sold they planted they built but on the day that lord went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even so it will be in the day when the son of man is revealed i pray that in the name of jesus you will not be found wanting on the day the son of man will be revealed in the name of jesus you'll be counted worthy as one of the saints in the name of jesus i will be counted worthy in the name of Jesus. in that day he who is on the house top and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Luke 17, 32. This is one of the shortest scriptures, shortest verses in the scriptures. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Well, Lord. So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Chapter 18. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose art so whatever makes you a man qualifies you for prayers men always ought to pray and not to lose art whatever qualifies you whatever makes you a man qualifies you to pray and not to lose art so it is either you're praying or you're losing heart so i will say Choose prayers so you will not lose heart. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. You know, each time I read this scripture, it's always very deep. How did he become a judge? He did not fear man nor regard man. So he was too full of himself. He had this so much knowledge because for him to become a judge, you know, he was one, maybe, what do you call those who do not believe God now? You know, he was an atheist who says, who is God? Let him, I be just to read. And I don't believe in long leg. I don't believe in human connection. He says, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him. You know, when the Bible now uses the word widow, widow is someone who is a place. Widow is someone who does not have a support system. So, and there is a judge who should be, you know, uh, 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 a, a sucker, a help. But it did not. Says, who did not fear God, nor regard men. So, God cannot talk to him. Men cannot talk to him. And the widow does not even have a husband that can even say, please, talk to this judge for me. You know, I, I know a man of God who explains this Luke chapter 18 very powerfully. He says, when you talk about a judge, you are talking about legal system so he said prayer is a legal system prayer is like a legal system and a widow represent a weakling who comes to 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 seek help from a judge and he said in that and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary from my enemies or my adversary, sorry, enemy. And he will not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Mm. You know, he said the devil can be wearied. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him you can say it as an elect you cry day and night god so god jesus christ was saying that god is not even this terrible 
And if, if a terrible judge who did not even know God can, you know, answer a, 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 a widow, how much more the Heavenly Father avenge the elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them, it, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith? On the earth. Hmm. That is, faith means not giving up. Faith means crying day and night to God. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithe of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off will not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner that was the only i mean those were the only words he, he raised to god he will not even raise his eyes to god have be merciful to me a sinner i tell you this man went down to his house justify rather than the other you know jesus christ understood a lot of things he said, that man who just said, be merciful to me, a sinner, left the temple justified. Hmm. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Receive the grace for humility. Receive the spirit of humility in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, when it is time, when it is a time of life for your children to come to Jesus, no one, no man will forbid them. In the name of Jesus, your children will come to the Lord. They shall be touched of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, no man will forbid them. No man will send them away from following Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I like this. I read it again, verse 15. Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. Don't forbid the children. For of such is the kingdom of God. As surely I said to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as, little, as a little child will by no means enter it. How does little children accept the kingdom of God? They believe everything you tell them. Tell your child, we're traveling to so, 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 and so place outside of your country, even without a visa, he believes you, he starts setting. Tell a little child anything, he believes you. Now a certain ruler asked him saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Mm. Come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful 
for he was rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The hmm. Bible says he became sorrowful for he was very rich. Hmm. And those who heard it said, who then can be saved? But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So God can cause a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That's what he's saying. Then Peter said, see, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, as surely I said to you, there is no one who has left house or parent or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Then it took the twelve aside. and so, so let me quickly explain this. He said there is no one who has left anything to follow him that will not. You see, I say it all the time. You can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. You must get to understand that whatever you, you give up for the sake of the gospel, you will sure get it. He talked about your wife, brothers, parents, children. So what else can be more than that? Verse 31, then he took the 12, the 12 aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished, for it will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked. And insulted and spit upon, they will scourge him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of those things. This saying was eaten from them, and they did not know the things which were spoken. I pray that in the name of Jesus, all that you need to know will not be eaten from you. You will enjoy abundant of revelations in the name of Jesus. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho. A certain blind man sat by the road begging and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and he cried out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Now, let me say this. In my book, Driven by Voices, I wrote that there is the voice of the people. That man raised his voice and the people you know, said he should be quiet. But he shouted the more. And Jesus told him to come. Don't allow the voice of the people to quiet you from reaching out to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. So faith is crying out to Jesus for help. Faith is crying out to Jesus for help. And immediately he received his sight and followed him. He received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it, gave praise to God. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the things that will happen in your life will cause men to praise God in the name of Jesus. Chapter 19, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now and behold, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was. So in our environment, people could, be, people could be rich, but they still long to see Jesus. Let them see Jesus through us. Their wealth, no minded, no, you know. So you must let men see Jesus. He said, though, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich and he sought to see 
oh jesus was he had never seen jesus before but could not because of the crowd for it was of short stature <laughs> so he ran ahead and climbed up in climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was going to pass that way what a strategic man short stature but he has sense so, you know went to stay on a sycamore tree and when jesus came to the place he looked up i pray you'll be strategic in this year in the name of jesus the bible says he looked up and saw him and said to him see so it means this chapter is about that man because he was strategic you will be strategic the, 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 you you will receive strategies in the name of jesus he looked up and saw him and said to him zacchaeus make haste and come down for today i must stay at your house because jesus saw his heart that he really wanted him in fact what zacchaeus wanted was just to see who jesus this jesus that you guys have been talking about who, how does he look like but he got more than his requests jesus said you will not only see who i am i will come and stay in your house so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully joyfully but when they saw it they all complained saying he's going to be a guest with a man who is a sinner then zacchaeus stood and said to the lord look lord i give half of my goods to the poor wow and he was still a rich man half of his goods but he told the certain man earlier that we read give up give you go and say what you have that one went away sorrowful but somebody said i give half of my goods to the poor and if i've taken anything from anyone by false accusation i restore fourfold now jesus never preached anything he started because jesus's presence you know there you know uh, you know ushered in purity ushered in righteousness he started saying jesus i know this is this, this is that you know he said it and jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because he is also a son of abraham powerful powerful salvation has come to this house for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost i want to say allow jesus into your house allow jesus into your house now as the other things he spoke under parable because it was near jerusalem because they thought the kingdom of god will appear immediately therefore he said a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return so he called 10 of his servants delivered to them 10 minas and said to them do business till i come do business so do business till i come but his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us and so it was that when he returned having received the kingdom he then commanded this servant to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading i said it earlier god want us to be profitable And he said to him, okay, then came the first saying, master, your mina has earned 10 minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over 10 cities. Hmm. And the second came saying, master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. Then another came saying, master, here is your mina which i have kept put away in a handkerchief for i feared you because you are an austere man wow you collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow and he said to him out of your own mouth i will judge you you wicked servant you knew that i was an austere man collecting what i did not deposit and reaping what i did not sow why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected it with interest. Are you getting that? He called him wicked. So if we don't trade with what he has given us, it is defined as wickedness. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. But he said to him, master, he has 10 minas. You see why the rich, you know, get richer? 
For I said to you that to everyone who asks will be given, to everyone who asks will be given. So you must make sure you have. Because when you have, more will be given to you. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Hmm. Why the rich become richer, the poor become poorer. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. When he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem and it came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you where as you enter you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever sat. Hmm. Lose it and bring it here and if anyone ask you why are you losing it thus you shall say to him because the lord has need of it so those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them but as they were losing the coat the owners of it said to them why are you losing the coat and they said the lord has need of him then they brought him to jesus Wow. And they, they, they did not do anything. It was as, as said. So they oh my God. Ah, authority. There's authority in Jesus. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the old multitude of the disciples began, the old multitude of the disciples, pay attention to that. So not just 12, multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I like that word. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed in heaven, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher! Rebu rebuke your disciples but he answered and said to them i tell you that if they should keep silent the stones will immediately cry out and jesus meant every word of it now as he drew near he saw the city and wept over the second place in the scriptures where jesus wept saying if you had known even you especially in this your day the things that make for your peace but now they are eating from your eyes oh grados non for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you surround you and close you in on every side and level you up and your children within you to the ground and they will not live in you <coughs> one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation <coughs> may you know the time of your visitation in the name of jesus then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it saying to them it is written my house is a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves i like that word my house is a house of prayer so principally the house of god is a house of prayer and he was teaching daily in the temple but the chief priests the scribes and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything for all the people were very attentive to hear him hmm. for all the people were very attentive to hear him Chapter 20, which is the last chapter for this episode. Now it happened on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel that the chief priest and the scribes together with the elders confronted him and spoke to him saying, tell us by what authority are you doing these things? Or who is he who gave you this authority? So Jesus was of a different class and they noticed that this kind of authority is unique but he answered and said to them i also will ask you one thing and answer me the baptism of john was it from heaven or from men 
And they reason among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered and they answered that they did not know where it was from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Then he began to tell the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, leased it to the vine dressers, and went into a far country for a long time. Now at vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers, that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the vine dressers beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent another servant and they beat him also, treated him shamefully and sent him away empty handed. And again, he sent a third, a third and they wounded him also and cast him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. But when the vine dresser saw him, they reasoned among themselves saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. And when they had it, they said, certainly not. Then he looked at them and said, what then is this, is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on that stone will be, will be broken, but on, on whom but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. 19. And the chief priest and the scribes that very hour sought to lay hands on him, but they feared the people, for they knew he had spoken this parable against them. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be righteous, that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Spies were sent to Jesus. Hmm. Then they asked him, saying, Teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly, and you do not show personal favorit favoritism, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Why do you test me? Show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does he have? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. But they could not catch him in his words, in the presence of the people. And they marveled at his answer and kept silent. Then some of the Sadducees, who denied that there is a resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife, and he dies without children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took her as wife, and he died childless. Then the third took her, and in like manner the seven also hmm. one woman and they left no children and died last of all the woman died also therefore in the resurrection whose wife does she become for all seven had her as wife all of them did not have anybody they want to marry it's only one woman Jesus answered and said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to attain that age, you will be counted worthy. I will be counted worthy in the name of Jesus. And the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But even Moses showed in the burning bush passage, that the dead are raised when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For all live to him. Hmm. 
He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Then some of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, you have spoken well, but after that they dared not question him anymore. And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is the son of David? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David calls him Lord. How is he then his son? Mm. This is one of the few times Jesus Christ, you know, spoke very plainly. Then in the hearing of all the people, he said to his disciples, Beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seat in the synagogues, and the best places at feast, who devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, make long prayer. So long prayer sometimes can be a pretense. This will receive greater condemnation. I pray for you, you will not be condemned. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak to you that the word of the Lord has entered your heart, will enter your spirit. It will produce faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining this episode. It's my prayer that this word will do you good in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining this episode, episode 26. And I pray that God will do amazing things in your life in the name of Jesus. Like our Facebook page, Growing Up Spiritually, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that every new episode you get notified. It's my prayer that great, great things will happen for you, for your business, for your family in the name of Jesus. Keep winning. I'll see you in the next episode. God bless you.